So we're going to be installing Proxmox on Raspberry Pi 5 on top of Raspberry Pi OS. So let's get started. Now, before we begin, I do want to thank someone on my Twitter by the name of Friendly and Geeks who sent me over the instructions on getting Proxmox installed onto our Raspberry Pi 5s. Now, this is completely different from my last video, which uses UEFI, which is missing a couple of key features using that method. So in this method, since we are installing on top of Raspberry Pi OS, a lot of things are working, mainly our networking and a couple of these modules that you see here. Now in the UEFI version, the, this module is not working, which is the main module itself, as well as ethernet. So those are two primary things that I had a problem with. Moving forward, everything is working. I was able to get VMs working and containers as well. So let's begin. All right, so one of the first things you need to do is flash the image onto a hard drive. Now I'm using an SSD, so I have more storage for VMs and stuff. So what I'm gonna do is go into my imager, choose device, it's gonna be Raspberry Pi 5, choose OS, it's gonna be other, and it's gonna be 64-bit light. Choose storage, it's gonna be my 240 gigabyte SSD. Hit next, and I am not gonna choose any settings. You can if you wanna change the host name and a bunch of stuff and get SSH working, but I'm not. It's gonna erase everything, are you sure? Yes. And give this a few minutes depending on the speed of your USB and your SSD. Uh, it shouldn't take too long, but we still have to stay in this because we have to enable something called USB max current if you are using SSDs. So yeah, this goes by pretty quick. And there we go, it's verifying. Once this is done, I'm gonna go continue and you can see I'm gonna click over here and mount the boot FS. And I am gonna go into config. And on the bottom where it says all, I'm gonna add USB max current enable equals one. This will allow you to boot up from SSD. I'm gonna save this, close this out, and now I'm gonna pop this into my Raspberry Pi and we're gonna continue with installation. All right, so here we go now. This is the first time it's booting into the Raspberry Pi, so it's gonna ask you to change your language and stuff like that, keyboard layout. In my case, I'm gonna go into United States, US right over here, username, doesn't matter too much because to log into the Proxmox, you will be using root, but I am gonna create something just for my username itself. And there we have it. So the first thing I'm going to do is make sure I have internet. So I'm going to do sudo apt update and see if there's any repositories I have to update. I'll do it a little bit later because it's going to be all together with the other projects anyway. So from now on, I'm going to do s sudo and then jump into super root or super user. And then I'm going to change a password for root. So I'm going to do p a s s w d. And then this is where you would type in your password for your root. Once that is done, now we start doing the stuff that we need for getting Proxmox enabled. So now we have to download curl. Do I have curl? Yes, I do. So curl, I'm gonna do HTTPL, HTTPS, Mira. This is the same location as the ISO image that I got last time. So in, in our case right now, we're actually not using the ISO image. We're just gonna use their repository. So we're doing Mira app, apqa.ca slash Proxmox slash Debian slash PVE port dot GPG. And then we're gonna pipe this into a T. And then we're gonna save this over to our user slash share slash key ring. And then it's gonna be PVE port dot GPG. There we go. So now I had a typo. It's Mira dot APQA dot CN, not CA another typo it's mirrors so my fault there we go so we're gonna clear the screen again and now it's saved because it had all that gibberish now we're gonna create an app list so we're gonna do echo deb we're gonna open a bracket and we're gonna say deb equals arm 64 and it's signed by equals slash user slash share which is the same location where you save the file at slash key ring slash pve port dot gpg close bracket and then we're gonna direct this over to https colon ss slash slash mirrors slash a p q a dot cn slash prox mox slash debian slash pve space bookworm 
and port. I'm gonna close that quote, and then we're gonna pipe that into a T slash etc slash apt slash sourceless.d, and then we're gonna name this file pve port dot list. list. There we go. And now we could do apt update. Man, I'm having so much typos today. You see how I echo dev instead of deb? What I'm gonna do now is nano into that etc app source.list.d and then pve port. I'm just gonna fix that real quick. Instead of dev, I'm gonna change this over to deb. Save this and then clear the screen again. And then we're gonna do apt update. And there we go. Now we don't have any errors. And this is fine to have on the bottom. It shows up a couple of times. Now we're gonna do app this upgrade. Technically, it's just gonna install those 16 packages that we had from before. All right, now we have more configuration. We're gonna nano into etc host. And in here, we're gonna get rid of all the IPv6 versions, that colon colon. So I'm gonna go in here and do just a control K, control K, control K to wipe those out. And then we're gonna add a new one here, which is the IP address of this. Actually, let me see what the IP address is while I'm doing this. IP A. And the IP address is 206. So we're gonna do 192.168.105.206 tab. And then we're gonna call this Raspberry Pi. This is the same as what your host name is. Don't change it. If you change your host name, then change that. So if you change your host name to like Pi5, you have to change it to Pi5 over there. Now we're gonna to have to modify our net interfaces. So we're gonna nano into etc network slash interfaces. And this is a pretty big one. We do have to do this because Proxmox runs off this list. So first I'm gonna comment out the source and in here I'm gonna do the standard um, if faces stuff. So we're gonna do auto low, I face low, I net loop back. And then the next one is I face ETH zero, I net static. And then here we're gonna create a new bridge. So we're gonna call this auto VMBR zero, which is what Proxmox uses. And we're gonna call this I face VMBR zero, I net static. Tab in on that address. 192.168.105.206, which is the one we used before, slash 24. Gateway, which would be 192.168.105.1. And then bridge port with an S, etho zero. And then this one is bridge S uh, T P off. And then bridge dash fd zero so these are the standard things you would use for the bridge we got our ip address our gateway the interface that we're going to be bridging off of which is ether zero and then a few options on the bottom now we're going to save this it's not going to take an effect yet until our next step which is installing the bridge utilities and if up down so we're going to do apt install if up down two this is what is required on proxmox and actually let me clear the screen on this and we're gonna install bridge utils. There we go. It's gonna install those two functions and it's gonna reboot your networking. So if the settings were wrong, you might lose internet. There we go, clear. We're gonna ping Google just to make sure internet's still there. And if it's not working like this, that means uh, some of the, something in the settings was not working. Now we're gonna start installing Proxmox. So we're gonna do apt install PVE dash e d k 2 firmware yes now we're going to do apt install proxmox ve post fix open iSCSI dash i s c s i p v e dash e d k 2 dash firmware dash a arch 64 and there you go it's about two gigs total all right we're just gonna let this go again it might take about 10 minutes more or less for this part depending on well not really depending it's about 10 minutes but you do have to stay on this interface because it will ask you some questions about postfix a little bit later and certain things if you want to save configurations or not so 
Just keep your eye on this screen for a little bit until everything works out. All right, so here's one of the first question, which is postfix. For me, I'm not having, I don't plan on this Proxmox ever emailing me, so I'm just gonna put no configuration. And a few minutes later, this is the next question that will come up. If you wanna modify this PVE port, default is no, so we're just gonna say default because we created that file, so we don't want it to be modified at all. And once you're done with this, that's it. You could just reboot this device and the web service should start happening. So here we go. Just to make sure our IP address is 202, or nope, sorry, 206. And what we're gonna do now is sudo, actually we don't even need to sudo, we're just gonna do a reboot. And there we have it. We All we need to do is just head over to 206. And there we have our little screen right over here. We're gonna advance, accept the risk. Our root password that we created earlier. And this is our Raspberry Pi Proxmox environment. And you can see it's running four cores, 6.6, .6, PVE, eight gigs of RAM, everything you need for the Raspberry Pi. So I managed to play around with this for the past couple of days and set up a bunch of stuff. So I do have Ubuntu as a Linux container, Alpine, Arch Linux, and Ubuntu as a full VM. And you also see Windows 11. Unfortunately, in its current state, Windows 11 will not work because of KVM issues. Now I did do a quick research that there is a possibility of getting this working if you recompile the Raspberry Pi OS kernel to include certain things that will allow the KVM to work to let Windows 11 run. With that being said, I am avoiding installing Windows 11 because it does not work in this current state. But yes, we do have containers and regular VMs working. So here I'm gonna jump right into Ubuntu test and you can see that the terminal is working. Do I have HTOP? No. So I'm gonna do a apt install HTOP and you could see that it does install, I get internet, and the uh, LXT is working and it pop, pops right up. Same thing with Alpine. If I jump into Alpine, you could see I've got to do APK, HTOP. I believe I have it installed already, so I could just do HTOP here and you can see it is working. So yeah, containers do work in here. I'm gonna show you how to install those. Now, heading into my local storage, I'm gonna go over to my CT templates. Now, because we are running through a special repository, it's really cool that you can actually go to templates and download these versions. You can see this is all ARM64, ARM64. So if I wanted Alpine 316, I could just download directly from here. Or if you want to manually download these images, what you can do is head over to linuxcontainers.org like the previous way we did it. And you could go through this image as well. Now, say if I wanted to do Alpine 316 over here, I would go through the ARM64, go to default, head over to the latest version, and then download the root FS. So I would right click here, copy link, download from URL, paste the link over here, and I'll just do alpine316.tar.xz, and this will grab the image for me, and I can create a new CT image from that that I downloaded. Or if you wanted to, you can just hit templates, and I'll download 317. And that works as well. So I'm gonna create a container. So I'm gonna to go to create CT. I'll just call this test, uh, pop in a password. Next, for templates, I could choose either one. I could do 16 or 17, I'll do 17. Next, this CPU memory network, I'll do DHCP, DNS, confirm, finished. Task okay. And I'll pop right into that, call the test. And then I'm gonna start this. And there we go, we have our 317 Alpine right over here. APK add, add NeoFetch. Let's run that. And there we go. We have the Alpine 317 ARCH64 uh, Raspberry Pi Fun model. And we have this work. And to create a VM, it's pretty easy. It's a little bit easier than Raspberry Pi 4 because we don't have, it doesn't default to IDE anymore and it'll default to SCSI. So that was something that we had to adjust. So in my case, I'm gonna do 106 UBU-test. So images, I have Fedora, uh, desktop, and then Ubuntu 22 live server. This is the one I'm gonna be running. It's just a little bit quicker, so I don't have to run in the desktop. Next, for system, we'll leave everything as default, but the BIOS, we're gonna have to switch over to OVMF, and EFI storage, we'll just keep it as local. Next, you see how everything is default to SCSI now? I'll just leave it at 32 gigs. Next, CPU one. Actually, CPU, I'll make this into two. Memory, we'll keep in two gigs because I got something else running at four. Network, I'll leave the same, confirm, finish. And then in this case, when it creates the 106, I should be able to run this. And it will jump into the server desktop, which is more of the text base. And there we go. 
So I could run this, I can install the server version, and that's how you would get VMs up and running. Now this does happen quite a few times throughout because it's trying to load new drivers and stuff like that, but it will come back and it'll give you new resources, especially if you're running desktop and everything. And that is it. Now, I honestly find this to be a little bit faster than the Zima Blade. Not even kidding, I believe, I feel like the VMs are actually running smoother and faster than of VM Blade. Now I'm gonna show you, while this is running, I'm just gonna show you the desktop itself. And it's quite responsive and it's quite smooth. So if I open a file manager, here we go. We got our file manager up and running and I'm still running this test in the background and it's still processing. But yeah, I could run Firefox. This Firefox does run a lot smoother than running uh, Mac OS on here on a VM. So yeah, if I go into YouTube, I could check out my latest video, which is the dashboard video. And yeah, video does work as well on this. It's not bad. It's not great. It's not like graphic accelerated, but it does run way better than you would find on uh, OS X. And my mouse doesn't have any issues and I can close this whenever I want. But yeah, VMs work pretty well on this. And I honestly believe it runs smoother than on the Zima Blade. I'll probably do a benchmark comparison in the future just to see if it is true or not. But yeah, so far I do like Proxmox running on the Raspberry Pi 5. Now if you got any questions about this, hit me up down in the comments below. And if you guys are new to this channel, consider subscribing and also hitting that bell notification icon so you know when the next video is going to be out. And I say my Nerd Cave, thanks for watching.